All right, this is fourth grade, module one, lesson three, and we're just continuing to study big old huge numbers, in this case all the way up to the millions, and we're going to be using that place value chart to make sure we understand what's going on. All right, so here it says solve each expression and record your answer in standard form. I, I decided to show this problem, parents and teachers, not because the math here is hard, but because it's got some phrases that are right here that probably really unfamiliar to the way we, as parents and teachers, the, we, the way we grew up learning mathematics. So I thought I would show it to you because it's really cool and it's designed to help students build number sense rather than just have them blindly follow some silly rules. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show, I'm going to draw out that classic place value chart. And I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Um, I, I tend to not give students um, a place value chart that's pre-laid out and pre-filled in because I want them to practice saying the column names, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and then what's after thousands is ten thou ten thousands. And what's after ten thousands? Hundred hundred thousands. And I, I make them write it out um, because we really need our students practicing this. Oftentimes kids will say ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, millions, and, and they'll completely skip these two columns. Uh, so I, I force our students to a little kind of practice. So let's take a look at this third one here, 5,000s plus 7,000s. So if we were going to model that using place value disks, 5,000s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 7,000s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we know that any time you have 10 dots, you can exchange it. You can cash it in for one dot in the column to the left. So we end up with 1 in the 10,000s column, and we end up with 2 in the 1,000s column, and we end up with nothing over here. So what they are asking for us to do is to write it in standard form, which is this down here. However, let's practice putting our commas in. So it's 1, 2, 3, and there's our comma right there. Uh, more of the same, so now we've got 2,000s plus 1,200s. So I'm going to model that, because it's kind of actually kind of tricky. So let's model 2,000s, so 2,000s, and then 1,200s. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. All right, and now we're going to add those together. However, we've got some exchanging that we're going to be able to do. Um, and the exchanging is because anytime you have 10 dots in a single column, you can bundle those together. You can cash them in for a dot in the column to your left. So these 10 hundreds can bundle and equal a 1,000. So what do we end up with? Well, we end up with 3,000s, 200s, and nothing in the 10s, and nothing in the 1s column. So in standard form, it would look like this, and of course our comma should go right there. All right, so here we've got four 10,000s and four 1,000s, and that's being multiplied by 10. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to model it. So 4 in the 10,000s column is going to look like that. And I'm going to choose a different color just because. And then 4 in the 1,000s column looks like that. Now, it says we're going to multiply that by 10, which means we're going to have ten, uh, 4 columns of 10 here. And I'm going to use shortcut. I'm just going to go, OK, boom, 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 boom. And then boom, 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 boom. So <laughs> I'm representing this as columns of 10. So we've got a column of 10, a column of 10, a column of 10, a column of 10, and then four more columns of 10 over here. And remember, anytime you have 10, you can cash those in for a dot in the column to your left. Here's 10, 
you get a dot to the left. Here's 10, you get a dot to the left, and here's 10, you get a dot to the left. And we're going to repeat that because over here we've got 10, so we're going to get a dot to the left. Got another 10, so we got another dot to our left, another 10, and another 10, so we can add two more dots to our left. So what do we end up with? Well, we end up with four in the hundred thousands, we end up with four in the ten thousands, and we end up with nothing in any of the trailing columns. So how many thousands? You end up with, oh my goodness, 440 thousands, all right? So that's the answer in standard form. Now the question is saying how many thousands are in the answer? So it's possible that what they're looking for is for you to say 440 thousands as your answer there. And then up here, I'm not sure what the heck they're looking for. They might be saying um, we're looking for four in the hundred thousands column, hundred thousands. And we're going to have four in the ten thousands because we got four in the hundred thousands column and we have four in the ten thousands column. So that, that might be what they're looking for. I, honestly, it's not a big uh, worry at this point. Really, the big thing that is the worry, what we want students to understand is that when you start off with four in this column and four in this column and nothing over here, and when you multiply by 10, really what you're doing is you're multiplying each digit by 10, each digit by 10, and that digit moves, it ends up moving one column to your left. So this four multiplied by 10 becomes four in this column. This four multiplied by 10 ends up being, oops, I wrote a five, didn't I? Ends up being a four there in this column. And then this four multiplied by 10 ends up being a four in this column. And then this is a zero, this is a zero, this is a zero. And our last remaining place, which is leftover, ends up being a zero. That's the big shortcut that we want students to start to see. We're trying to avoid just simply telling kids, oh, all you have to do if you're multiplying by 10, add a zero to the end. Um, we're trying to sh help them get to that point, but through number sense and through um, uh, building number sense and looking for patterns. And I chose this one because this one was actually kind of sneaky. So this says we're going to start with 27 thousands three hundreds and five ones. Well, modeling, uh, modeling the five ones and the three hundreds, that's pretty easy. Five ones, one, two, three, four, five, and three hundreds, one, two, three. But modeling the twenty-seven thousands gets a little tricky. So you're going to have twenty-seven right here. So I'm going to kind of shortcut this. And I'm going to say, well, here's a strip of 10, here's a strip of 10, and then we have 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, well, let's make this a little bit longer there. Okay, so there I kind of did a shortcut for showing my 27 in the thousands column. Now, the first thing we can do is we can say, hey, anytime you have 10 right here, you can cash those in for a dot in the column to your left. We've got another 10, so we can cash those in, and we haven't even really done any math yet. So now, what do we end up with so far? We haven't even multiplied by 10 yet. Right now, we're just modeling the number that we've been given. So we have 2 in the 10 thousands column. We end up with 7 in the thousands column. There's the 27 thousands that we started with. 3 in the hundreds column. We have nothing, a big old fat zero in the tens column, and we have 
five in the ones column. All right, so there's our starting point. We just modeled this number right here. So now the idea is we're going to multiply by 10. Well, what's, the, what's that beautiful pattern that we found? Well, the beautiful pattern we found is when you multiply a digit by 10, it moves to the left. And when you multiply that by 10, you multiply by 10, you multiply by 10, and you multiply by 10. So this 7 multiplied by 10 ends up being a 7 in the column to your left. This becomes a 3. This is a 0 because 0 times 10 is a 0 in the column to your left. And then 5 times 10 gives you a 5 in the column to your left. And now we have a leftover. Nothing's left over here. Well, that means you just stick on a 0. And so what is our final answer? It's 273050. And to be appropriate, we should put a comma right there. 273,050. You'll notice I'm kind of conspicuously ignoring that because I'm just jumping straight to the answer because really the important thing at this point is identifying that pattern and recognizing the pattern. And that wraps up 4th grade module 1 lesson 3 where we're using the placement char place value char, we're putting in our commas where they're supposed to go, but really we're looking for that sh shortcut for what happens when you multiply or divide a number by 10.